People struggle with the idea that putting down a liquid, especially on a day when it's negative 10, negative 12, negative 20, even colder in Minnesota where we're from, um, it seems like a liquid would freeze. Well, with the proper blends, we actually can work to lower temperatures in rock salt. And again, conceptually speaking, when we're using a sodium chloride based brine and spraying it onto snow and ice, we're doing the exact same thing as spreading rock salt. When you spread rock salt on snow and ice, you're creating brine on the ground. So when that rock salt reacts with the moisture on the ground, it creates a brine puddle. That brine puddle spreads. And as that brine puddle spreads, when you spread rock salt, that's what creates your safe pavement. Well, one of the big benefits to brine is we're gonna use a lot less salt and a lot less product to get the same results. The reason for that is because when we spread rock salt, we need those puddles to spread. We need our granules of salt to be very, very close together so those puddles don't have to spread very far. Scientifically speaking, it only takes 160 to 200 pounds of rock salt per acre to get a safe surface. Most contractors apply between 800 and 1,000 pounds per acre because if they only did 160 to 200, those puddles will take too long to spread. You'd have 48 hours before you have safe pavement. And with the society we're in with lawsuits, slip and falls, that's just not acceptable. Now, when we start talk, talking about using that brine, skipping that phase change from the rock salt to the puddle, we're using much, much less salt. So there's major, major salt savings which is huge benefits for your customer. Number one, they're not gonna track salt and, and debris into the buildings. Number two, the parking lots aren't gonna be stained white and look like a mess all the time after the snow melts. A lot of times you'll see an oversalted lot that looks like, oh, there's still snow on the lot, but actually it's excess salt that's left behind. Uh, number three, dead, uh, dead grass and landscaping. Oftentimes after the snow melt in the winter, you'll see the big dead patches of grass along sidewalks, along curb lines see the dead shrubs and trees, that's due to too much chloride salt going on the property. With salt brine, because you're reducing the amount of salt so much, that doesn't happen. The other benefit of liquid compared to granular salt is it stays where you put it. So when you put down a rock salt and then you run a plow over it, that rock salt ends up wherever you push the snow pile. When you put down a liquid, I'm not saying none of it ends up in the snow pile, but much, much less of it ends up in the snow pile than the granular because that liquid product gets into the pores and cracks of the concrete and asphalt and it stays where you put it thus keeping the chloride where it needs to work instead of pushing it where you don't want it to be working. Um, other benefits include the ability to work to lower temperatures. So we, again being from Minnesota, have successfully de-iced bare pavement with puddles in a parking lot at negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Rock salt is only effective down to five or maybe even 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there are treated salt products that work to lower temperatures, but again, higher cost. Um, you're gonna have to have a special stockpile of that treated product. Uh, when it's warmer out, you don't want to waste it because you don't need it. And, and with liquid, we just have a lot more adaptability. We can take our 23.3% salt brine, put our additive with it, and on a cold day, you a little, little bit more of that additive, you can work to a lower temperature. Again, we've tested all the way down to negative 30. I've talked to clients up in Alaska, de ice down to negative 40. So you can do some pretty amazing things with the right blends of liquid that you cannot do with salt.